Second, are uh, the plain clothes men and women that operate in the narcotics division and they carry out drug enforcement. Uh, the other area of plain clothes is in the transit facilities. And you also have plain clothes that are located in the NYCHA developments and our various PSAs. It appears as though the announcement by the police commissioner is going to impact the deployment of PSAs as well as precinct personnel. It's not going to impact the citywide plainclothes unit. It's not going to impact the transit unit and it's not going to impact narcotics. The transit and narcotics units utilizing plainclothes is understandable. I am concerned about that we're not dismantling the citywide plainclothes units. If you look historically, the citywide unit are the units that used to be called street crime. That is a very troubling group of enforcement or officers, I believe, because they do not come under the same level of supervision that a precinct anti-crime unit would actually be under. Many times as a platoon commander and as an executive officer in the rank of captain, we would have plainclothes officers that were citywide in our pre precincts or command without us being aware of it. They often operated under different frequencies. So you did not hear when they responded to jobs or any form of police activity. I don't believe we could continue to police in this fashion. I think it was the right decision to dismantle and put those officers who are precinct level plain clothes and PSA level plain clothes back into uniform assignments. I also believe it's imperative that we have some form of plain clothes in the subway system to deal with terrorism and to deal with some of the other sex crimes and those who utilize the subway system for sexual criminal behavior. It's important to have those plain clothes officers there and in, even in narcotics enforcement because it plays a vital role in doing so. But I don't believe we should continue a citywide anti-crime. And I do believe that any uniform personnel that is doing or carrying out plain clothes assignment on a citywide level should have some form of police uniform apparel. Far too many times we have witnessed police officers in plain clothes assignment, stopping their vehicles, jumping out of the cars, not properly identifying themselves, and having physical confrontations with individuals on the streets who are not aware that they are police officers in the first place. And there's so many names that can be added to the list of Black men who have been the victim of this form of policing. Black and brown men have found themselves on the confrontational end of plainclothes officers enforcement. The names are known to many of us. Amadou Diallo, Plains Clothes Unit, shot over 40 times. The case around the issue that happened to Sean Bell, South Jamaica, Queens, plainclothes officers approached the car, shot into the car. The car was reportedly being driven away, unaware that the individuals who were approaching were police officers. It led to the loss of life for Sean Bell. Also, Zongo, African immigrant, Mr. Zongo, was cornered in a trailer in, in a warehouse where an officer was out of uniform, shot, and took his life. The list goes on. Far too many encounters with plainclothes officers not properly identifying themselves and causing the loss of life or a negative confrontation between police and civilian. I have a clear message. There's nothing common or plain by the impact that plain clothes officers have caused in trauma in too many communities of color. This was an important initiative and I believe we should go further and disband our citywide units as well. In response to the mayor's decision of ensuring that video equipment 
that is used whenever there's a police encounter is displayed to citizens within 30 days. Crucial. We have far too long concealed the behaviors of the NYPD and didn't ensure that city residents had the right to have transparency. By ensuring in 30 days, we are turning over the video surveillance of interactions with the public is extremely important. As a former police officer, there's nothing I would rather have than a camera showing exactly what actions I participated in. If you are doing the job right, you will be exonerated by showing your interactions with the public. And it's important that it should not take years or a lawsuit for this information to be turned over. Let's bring transparency to policing. We are in a place where we must renew the confidence of the countless number of communities that are calling for reform. There's no better way to do it than to show on a video piece of equipment what actually transpired between civilian and police agencies. These are two important initiatives. I believe they're pieces to the puzzle that will finally give us a true picture of reform and what policing looks like. We must go further. We can't rest on merely doing things that are part of the puzzle and not the entire puzzle. I renew my calls for the mayor to ensure that precinct commanders are chosen from the community boards, cure violence, and precinct council members. I renew my call to use money from our budget to do proactive measures that would ensure not a reaction method of dealing with public safety, but to be proactive in the fashion to fund groups and initiatives like Fair Future with countless number of foster children age out of foster care. We should focus on the issues of dyslexia training and identification so that we won't have a substantial number of prisoners at Rikers Islands who are dyslexic because we did not identify it early and give proper care. And focusing on using our dollars in law enforcement correctly must be more than just moving units out of the police department. We have to move to the direction of civilianization of those positions in the police department. Officers should be fighting crime, not doing clerical duties. Now is the time to transform policing into the public safety apparatus that it could become. If we don't do it now, we will lose the opportunity and the window of opportunity to accomplish this task. Again, I thank you for allowing me to share my visions, not only as the ball president, but as a person who wore a bulletproof vest for over 22 years, protecting the children and families of this city. Joan, I will turn it over if there are any questions. Yeah, we, we're open to a couple questions from the press. We understand you're on uh, tight deadlines, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Borough President Adams, Jay Dow here. Uh, I would like to just ask you your thoughts, not just on uh, what, in your opinion, these new police reforms add to uh, the quality of life in black and brown neighborhoods, but we just had President Trump sign this executive order. I want to know your thoughts on that as well, please. Uh, I, didn't, I did not get an opportunity to read the executive order. Can you give me an overview of it? The executive order, uh, many observers have pointed out, seems to put an emphasis on training. A, a training is, is crucial, but we can't continue to hide behind the failure of training and believe that that is the only area where we are failing. In addition to training of how a police officer currently is trained, how to de-escalate when someone is in a dispute or an argument, we must ensure that police officers are trained on how to de-escalate when they are over the beyond the law enforcement training that they receive. They need to identify when their partners need to de-escalate. De and then we need to look at what happened in Minneapolis. Quick, expeditious removal of officers who violate the law. Our 
criminal justice apparatus, apparatus immediately making uh, apprehensions in those areas where it's clear that a crime took place, such as what happened to Mr. Floyd. And those are the most important areas we should be also focusing on. We, it took us five years to deal with the Pendaleos firing, and we failed to get any form of grand jury indictment. And so it's more than just training. We need to identify those officers who had violent tendencies and immediately remove them from the police department. We need to identify those officers who are dealing with real psychological and emotional trauma. Leading cause, one of the leading causes of divorce, one of the leading causes of alcohol use, one of the leading causes of suicide. Uh, we need to be, be, be extremely clear that law enforcement in itself must be focused on to ensure officers who are no longer suitable to carry a gun and have a badge and wear the uniform should not stay in the agency. So it's more than just training. We need to start training all the additional apparatus to identify those officers who are not so suitable to be police officers. Any other questions for the borough president before we conclude? Okay, seeing none, we wanna thank everyone for joining. Um, and if anyone has any questions that weren't addressed, feel free to contact me, Jonah Allen at J-O-N-A-H.A-L-L-O-N -L -L at brooklynbp.myc.gov. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Jonah.